everybody it's been a while um and i'm back with something well it related uh, it's just something a little bit different i had the need for a web server and i wanted a dedicated web server i didn't want massive hardware massive power draw uh, <laughs> lots of space noise so what did i do i searched around on Amazon <clears throat> and came across one of the current mini PCs. Uh, it's a B Link BT3 X, and for the princely sum of £99, I uh, purchased this dedicated box. So it's a mini PC, all enclosed. Um, I've got a, you can see it on my desktop here. It comes with really good connectivity couple of USB 3 ports on the front and a uh, dual 3.5mm connector for headphones and microphone and obviously the power button. On the side we've got a TF card, micro SD card slot and on the rear we have some more USB 3, uh, Ethernet, Gigabit Ethernet at that, two HDMI ports, power a Kensington lock and that's it really. Uh, that's everything you need um, it can run simultaneously to screens it comes with Windows 10 home edition uh, it's a Celeron J3355 processor so it's a fairly new processor it's stock 2 gigahertz with a boost up to 2.5 comes with 4 gigabytes of non-upgradable RAM 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage on which Windows 10 is installed. HD 500 graphics are on the chip. Dual band Wi Fi. So it has everything you need. Windows 10 Home Edition is installed, so when you power it on, you just have to run through the initial setup. I'll be honest, Windows 10 runs fine. It's not a gaming machine, but then again, that's not what it's intended for. But what I'm intending for it is to run Linux. Now, that should be simple, but it's not as simple as it could be. I'm going to do a separate video on Linux and specifically setting up the Wi-Fi for this device. It's an Intel 3165, I think it is off the top of my head, which by default, the drivers don't pick up if you are installing Ubuntu. As I say, I'm going to do a separate video on how to fix that. The drivers are actually within Ubuntu and can be easily done. Like I say, there'll be some instructions. So I have this dual booting between Linux and Windows, with the first being Linux. So I've got it set up as a web server. The box itself, uh, what else do I need to say? It's small. I'll be honest, some people have complained about it being noisy. Excuse me while I just get my uh, toolkit, but I have not noticed it. I've not noticed it being noisy. I've had the unit on for 12 hours, um, well, actually more than 12 hours, but temperature wise, it's actually been um, fine. It's, it's really sort of room temperature, so it's not. It's not really struggling with any thermal. Again, it's been just running Linux as a, as a web server, so it's not been doing anything particularly taxing. I'm trying to do this. I need a proper, I need a better video setup. I really do. I'm trying to do this one-handed too is just not great. Unscrewing this, I need to uh, speed on through. The uh, device I have actually bought so this video is not a paid promotion in any way however I do highly recommend it right so I've unscrewed the screws off the top but you do need to be careful opening it when it comes there is the SATA connector is cabled on so you can see there it's actually stuck on the um, the top of the, the top of the box with the tape so you just need to be careful so you don't break it. Obviously, I've mounted a SSD in here, which has got my Linux 
distribution on and you can take the board out there's four screws in the ends which you can pull out and look at it but basically it's a heat sink on the underside nothing's upgradable there's a couple of um, M SATA slots so you could put I mean it's got wireless on board so you'd just be likely to put a drive in if needs be you've got the battery for the real-time clock and well that's it really not a lot to it it's actually a really nice easy to work on design for what you need so I'll put that back together and by the magic of film I'm gonna screw that back together so there we go I screw back together and that's the device it comes with a mount for back of a TV it comes with two HDMI cables so one's a short one and a longer one and power supply and some screws to attach the uh, hard drive and also to attach the face amount on here and that's it 99 pounds 99 UK pounds this device is actually really good as I say there'll be a video coming up around installing Linux it's dead easy I've as you've seen I've put the SSD in there made a bootable USB drive you press F7 when it boots up you pick the a USB device and run through a Linux installer as normal quite straightforward but that's the end of my uh, look at the BT3-X from B-Link and I think it's a brilliant piece of kit and does exactly what I uh, what I need it to do and I highly recommend it anyway that's it for now thank you very much everybody goodbye until the next time